Hello gorgeous people, how are you? Today I'm talking about something I've been seeing that I want to share with you. I'll tell you all about it on the other side. So let me tell you a story. When I was in my 20s, I was in a band and the band was called Tuva, T-U-V-A. Yes, strange name, strange band, filled with strange people, me being one of them. And we used to like, it wasn't a big band. And you know, we did a little bit and we did a little bit of an album and stuff like that. But in the band, there was a guy called, we had a few band members. One was called Chalky, okay? And the other one was called Yeti, right? And then the other one was called Holly. And I was called Gordon, right? So. Chalky, Yeti, Holly, and Gordon. I didn't have any E sound on my name. And you, Gordy, I mean, that's just not, it's just not working, is it? So I was Gordon. Anyway, that was a long time ago. It was 40 years ago, more or less. And not so long ago, Yeti, who was the drummer, he got in touch with me on Facebook and just said, hey, Gordon. Uh, why did you never have a Y on your name? He said, hey, how are you? How's things? And I, hey, that's it's lovely to hear from you. What are you up to? Well, he still lives in the same town. He hasn't moved and stuff like that. But let me tell you about Yeti. Yeti had a bit of a look about him at the time. He would wear a bit of a bandana. He had long hair, red hair. He dyed it red. Uh, like, yeah, very nice. Uh, he was an attractive guy, tall, slim, used to wear tight jeans. He looked a bit like Jim Morrison and he was a drummer and he was sexy with it. So much to my surprise when I clicked, never, if you haven't seen somebody for 40 years, never click on the photos. This is what I've learned. Why? Because it reminds you of how fucking old you are because I clicked on his photos and what I saw could only be described as his grandfather. That's what I saw. So I was looking for Yeti because for me, he was still 20 in my mind, long hair, sexy, you know, bit of a swagger about him. And what I saw was a bald man with a big belly, glasses and gray hair. That's what I saw. He looked like he'd shrunk by about five foot. And I was thinking, what, what happened? How can that happen? How can we go from super sexy to grandfather material in 40 years? But it's happened. It happened to him. And lovely guy, anyway, we were chatting and we connected and that was it, okay? And not only that, not only that, right, Yeti, Got all the girls, all the gorgeous girls. He had gorgeous girls around him. He had groupy girls and everything. And now he has married somebody who would be the antipathy of who he might go out with. Like, not one of the most attractive women. And, I, you know, I'm not being uh, ugliest. She's not particularly attractive. But he loves her. There you are. And it's just, isn't it funny how we change and how people change and how our expectations change as we get older. Anyhow, just two days ago, right? So he's he's there in Blythe <laughs> in the Northeast of England. And I see on his Facebook, I, I don't go into Facebook, but sometimes when I'm posting for the business, I have to look at some things. And there he was with his wife in church getting baptized, right? And he put, everyone was saying, congratulations on getting baptized. And he put, Jesus is the savior. And I thought, wow, wow. Well done him. You know, that at that age, he's decided that he wants to have the faith. He wants to have some faith. And he wasn't particularly religious when I knew him. Now this is anecdotal, and I think the new woke society, if you say anything about a story about anybody you know, they have a, a different expression. If you know it, put it in the comments. It's like something story, isn't it? Don't tell me your, your 
your your own life story or so I don't know something like that. But it, basically, it's it, that's an anecdotal story. This is an anecdotal story, but it's something that I see a lot. I'm seeing a lot people suddenly wanting to get faith. I know we talked about it. Somebody who's just new to the channel and I don't know if she'll watch this video, Blanca. Blanca from Pamplona. Okay, we've worked in, in our Spanish business. We've worked with Blanca for years and years and years. What I don't do is I don't tell people what I do on this channel in my other business. It's just not the forum. It's not appropriate. And I don't want to, you know, some people get a shock. You know, I do so because this is pretty woo-woo in this side. This is the woo-woo side of my life. Anyway, Blanca, I, I posted a post from Peaceful Rebellion accidentally on my Spanish LinkedIn page. And she saw it and she went, oh my God, I didn't know you did things like that. And I instantly took it off, obviously, but it wasn't a bad one. It was, it was okay, but it just not, you want to keep them separate. So anyway, Blanca came and she's joined the, the group. She was saying she's on a, a, a spiritual journey she's you know she's working starting to to work on herself and look at her life and everything like that so beautiful anecdotal story but i know loads of people like that loads of people that are starting to want something more so i was asking the emissaries about that and they said yes you know this return to god is happening but what they said is that we want depth in our lives. We all want depth because a life without any depth is meaningless. It's shallow. And what they're saying is that what before lots and lots of people put their faith in the structure around us in society. But what's happening now is the more that time's going by, the more people are seeing that there is no depth to it. We used to think it was deep. We used to think when a politician was doing, making these decisions, they were thinking deeply about our interests. Bollocks, what a load of rubbish. They're not thinking. They're just reading off a scorecard. They're reading off a, off a teleprompter and somebody else writes it for them. There's no depth. And so everybody's saying that this world is totally shallow. So where they would project that, you know, I get my depth from society and science and all of that. They're realizing it's based on nothing. And so they've got all this need to find depth. Well, where do you turn? If you can't turn to the world for finding depth, what's left? The only thing that's left is to turn to spirituality. The only place to turn is to turn to God. You know, whatever that means to you. And that's what's happening, that, that people are being disillusioned. They're being disappointed and they're going, well, what am I going to do with all of this faith, all of this need for, for depth? And that's where they're going. They're going whew, off on their journeys. And hey, everybody's journey is different. And whatever journey you're on, mwah, bless it. Beautiful. You know, let nobody tell you that you that your journey is not the right one. It's the right one for you. But it's always a journey into profundity, into depth. That's beautiful. And there's nothing deeper than God. That's for sure. Now, on a lighter note, I saw something the other day which I thought was humorous. There's a man called Cuomo. And I think he has a brother as well. One of them was did something somewhere like as a mayor or whatever. And the other one was working on CNN. Well, the one who worked on CNN, Cuomo, during the height of the plan stroke demic, he was making fun of people who were taking that ivermectin drug. And he said to that, that black guy who, who, who worked on CNN and then lost his job as well, he said, we have to make fun of these people. We need to embarrass them because God, at the end of the day, it's a horse deworming tablet. Ha! Yeah. And then at the same time, the same man was saying, you've got to get your, you've got to get your jab, get your jab, do your service for mankind. It's safe and it's effective. So the usual shit, the usual shit. 
And now I just saw him having a chat, chatting away now all the all the shit's coming out and being splattered everywhere. And he was saying, and I had severe secondary effects from the jab. He, he is damaged, right? And he said, but I've got some experts working with me and I'm taking ivermectin, okay? And I was thinking, hang on a minute, hold your horses. What I didn't hear, what I didn't hear at any time was, and by the way, I am exceedingly sorry for having tried to force that on people and for calling out ivermectin and, and making people feel stupid for taking it. Never said that. It was all, oh, poor me, and I'm damaged too, I'm damaged too. Incredible. And you know, it reminds me of um, 1984, the book. So Winston, in 1984, if you've read the book, he works in the history change department. I can't remember the, the proper name, I'm kind of paraphrasing it, but the department that changed history. And so according to wherever they were, they would then change history and they would re, you know, if they were, because they always wanted to show an improvement. And so they would adjust the past to make it look like it, things were better, that things were cheaper now than they were before. So they were always fiddling with it. You know, you see exactly the same in uh, exams. Since the government started getting involved in the curriculum and exams and stuff, because they never used to, but then they started. And now everything has to be around the woke, wokeness in exams and stuff like that. But what they started to do was they started to skew the pass mark. So as people got gradually th stupider, as, as was their want, I'm talking about the government, making people stupider, what they started doing was skewing the, the figures so that you still passed. And they keep doing it. I mean, at, at what point are they going to get to the point where they say, well, everyone got a zero, so does that mean everybody's passed? Yeah, we'll just skew it down. That minus one is a fail and zero is a pass. I mean, it's getting dreadful. Interestingly enough, I have a student who I'm helping with Spanish and I'm helping her with her exams, which are government uh, controlled exams in English. And so I said, what's the exam involved? And she said, well, there's some written and then there's, you know, like a conversation, but then I have to do some monologues. I said, oh, really? Now tell me, what's the monologue about? Typically, what kind of subjects? She said, well, you know, things like climate change, um, the, uh, uh, the violence of men against women. Oh, so just the government's, uh, the government's propaganda. That's what, that's what it is. And that's what happens. I remember when I was doing running classes for Spanish in the exam papers, it was all government propaganda and they all had to do a talk on something very, very important, like the levels of CO2 and all of that. Like what the actual fuck is going on with education? Dreadful, it's dreadful, isn't it? But getting back to history changing, they want to change history. The people who were vociferous about all of this are now exactly on the other side of the fence going, well, you know, and all the news is coming out. Well, isn't this terrible? And you know, we were lied to. But the great thing about today's world is that there is no history change. They can't change it. Why? Because once it's on the internet, it can't be taken off. And yes, they have ways. They have bots that go, the AI goes zipping through, deleting stuff. The problem is that so many people have it downloaded and have it on their, their devices and they keep uploading them again. I see all the time video, lest we forget, let's not forget. And the same videos of the same people saying God awful things. Here in Spain, they've got a whole compilation of people who were saying some awful things, suggesting, remember when they were suggesting that we all had to wear an armband or a badge showing that we didn't have it? Stuff like that. Well, all of that is still there and it won't be forgotten. We won't forget. 
Why should we forget? Because it's what happened. So no matter how much they try to change and how they, they, they try to jump fence, I tell you who's the worst. The worst fence jumper that I think I've ever, ever experienced is that horrible man. What's he called? He's so horrible, I've forgotten his name. But he was on, he was on the panel of Britain's Got Talent. And now he, he does talk shows all the time and he, and he talks to the most polemic people he can find. He is a fence jumper. He jumps fences better than red rum. He is a fence jumper and he keeps jumping and, and, and I've never heard him apologize for the horrific things that he said, the horrific things that he tweeted out about us non people. Never. And there he is now pretending to be the the bastion of free speech and anti walk Very poor. Very poor. And that's where we are at the moment. It's fascinating, I think, at the moment. Fascinating time. So we've got all these people who want some depth in their life, turning back to spirituality and, and becoming the Buddha. And then we've got all of this other business going on of watching it all crumble into their own footprint, just like the buildings in 9-11. The world too is in free fall. And the question is, how can a building fall in on itself at free fall speed? Good question, one that has never been answered. But how can the world fall at free fall speed into its own footprint? Easy. We don't even have to do anything. They are doing it themselves. We're just gonna turn away. As the emissary said right at the beginning, turn away. It was a metaphor, but they kept repeating it. Turn away, take your vision off, take away your energy and they will collapse. Like a flan in a cupboard. With that, I shall leave you. I love you all and I'll speak to you all later. Bye-bye.